it's Robbie from Metal Health. Just, uh, when I got into this interview, uh, Chris just started to say some, like, really awesome things about, uh, mental health and COVID and everything, and, uh, I, uh, I didn't do the intro until much later, but it's in there, so keep watching. This is me and Chris from Lick. Yeah, sure. I mean... Okay, you're recording now, so yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You were, you were talking about talking about doing this interview, and uh, mental health came up. Yeah, exactly. And now we were talking about because now with the all this shit with the pandemic stuff going on in, in the world, and we was talking about it's not just. I mean, yeah, of course, people are tired of it, but a lot of people has been sitting at home for like over a year now, and I think it's you know, people need to you know you know. We kind of a the you they always say like the human being is like a pack animal we need to like socialize and i mean uh, i know a lot of people are saying that ah uh, i'm a lone wolf yeah sure well go out and live in the wilderness then but nobody does that i mean that doesn't happen anymore and and now you after after being on lockdown or whatever i mean in sweden we don't you can you couldn't really say that we are considered to be on lockdown in that sense that if you look on the rest of the world, but I mean, on the health issue thing, I think that a lot of people are feeling really, really bad because of this pandemic thing. And uh, it, it's, it's not getting better because it's like, I mean, imagine sitting at, at home on a lockdown for over a year. It's kind of, I mean, it's not healthy at no, all it's not healthy at all um no. like in fact um well i'm a recovering drug addict and everything and um they the ods and suicides have been going through the roof like yeah. as far as um the increase of suicides and overdoses uh it's 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 pretty scary uh i, I understand totally where the people who are doing this is coming from because um yeah. I, especially um uh, here in Toronto, our premiere on Friday basically tried to make it Germany in the 30s. And yeah. uh, you could, like, uh, if you walk anywhere, the police could stop you and ask you for your ID and why you were out. They could stop you in your cars. Good thing the police said we're not going to do that, but still, it was scary. And when I heard that announcement, like, I was just having the worst thoughts possible. Like, um, yeah. because, like, it's like, why did it get clean for this? Like with everything that's going on, like this is where we're headed. It's it's it's, it's just not right. And it wasn't just me. I, a lot of good friends in in recovery were having the same kind of thoughts. So yeah, it's scary. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta stay strong, man, because it's um, it's not gonna be worth it. I mean, then suddenly everything just gets gets back to normal or, or whatever normal is now. But and who knows what it would look like when when you know everything is going back to normal because i mean someday it has to right i mean this is not working out i mean businesses are going bankrupt and people are getting laid off and and i mean the world is it can't continue like this it's it's um and it's very very it is it is depressing i mean yeah. just looking at Maybe it's a simple thing for, but, but, but I mean, we, we released our latest album in September. Yes. Yes, you did right here. Yeah. Misanthropic Breed. And we haven't played live for that one single fucking time. And that. That was killing. Uh, yeah, it sucks. But yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, not to take anything away from, I mean, it, that, that doesn't, <laughs> I mean, it's not a mental health issue in that, sense you know what i mean yeah it's not like you i'm not, not gonna go try and kill myself or whatever but it's like i'm so fucking bored everybody's so fucking bored the band we had we, i mean we tried to rehearse or whatever and, and go down and but it, it the only thing that comes to mind when we sit, especially for me when i sit behind the, the kit and, and it's like why are we doing this i mean there's there's no why are we rehearsing there's no no goal. There's nothing to aim for. It's like, I just want to get out there and, and play the new songs. And it, now the songs is like, 
I got got a reminder like uh now in in march uh, oh it, 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 i would think it wasn't in, in, on facebook it's a year ago since you were, were in the studio and recorded uh, misanthropic breed i was like fuck you facebook i fucking hate <laughs> everyone's <you." laughs> saying fuck you facebook for a lot of different reasons yeah i know like, like, i know it's just getting so pissed off and they're banning anyone for having any different opinion yeah or anything that's controversial whatsoever. They put up the little reminders, even if you have COVID in the, in the, yeah. um, in the post whatsoever, it's just yeah. a lot of bullshit. And I really, yeah, it's totally, that's that, that fucking Facebook is just a, it's just a tool for, in my opinion, it's just a tool for, for, I don't know, governments and shit to keep, keep us, uh, you know, keep track of us. 100%. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just it's it. I fucking hate Facebook. I, the only reason I have it is because that's the only way you can like you know manage your your band because it's like your the homepage doesn't exist anymore. Those bands who have that, I don't know why. I mean, because I, I to be honest, it's like when you get shows like two or three years ago when we were. We have we were looking for shows and stuff like that. It was like, yeah, but how many likes do you have on Facebook? But really? <laughs> so it doesn't ha- it doesn't ha- doesn't have anything to do if the music is good or because we were like, and oh, we want to go on, uh, we, we want to play there, and we want to bring this band with us. How many likes do they have? It doesn't fucking matter, man. They are awesome. We want to bring them. If they don't come, we don't want to play. You know, it's it's like, yeah, that's sad. Like when social media takes over every aspect of everything now. Like, it's yeah. like not about how talented or how much, how good the sound is. It's just how many likes you have. Oh, yeah, it's disgusting. ridiculous. I mean, it's, why why can't it just? Okay, I, I know I can I can somehow I can understand it because that's the way the world works nowadays. But it fucking sucks because I think it should be measured in your talent or whatever you know i mean it's like if i when i come to toronto and i put you on the guest list are they gonna ask you when you come to the to the ticket so how how many followers do you have on facebook (laughs) Uh, i don't know i don't give a fuck i've been invited by chris here oh i can't let you in at least you gotta have a 500 i mean come on it's Good thing I'm trying to get as many uh, followers right now. <laughs> yeah, there aren't any going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but I mean, I mean, it's 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 when it what it all. I I have some sort of opinion and thoughts about this fucking pandemic. I think it's. I'm not sure if it's really that real. If it, if it, it's that big, as they say, but. Of course, I mean, people are dying. Yeah, they are. But now that we are keeping track of this, I mean, how many people are dying when we have all, you know, all the other yearly, because uh, I mean, we in Sweden, we have like four seasons. I guess you guys also have that. Yeah. And I mean, you have all the kind of sickness coming with every season. It's like you, 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 you get colds, you get ammonia, you get, you know, and I guess there's a lot of people dying from that shit too, but they don't keep track of it yeah everything like no one's saying like look at the the flu numbers right now because they're just astronomically low compared to usual but COVID is up i don't really know the only thing um i i find really skeptical is like when this all started like a year ago um you were getting all these like viral videos from china of people collapsing in the streets with like puking blood and stuff like that like mm-hmm. as metal as that is, it's not happening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, pu- nobody. There, there's been no report whatsoever that that people are puking blood. I haven't seen that anyway. I mean, yeah. I know there's they're put in put on the in the hospitals with what not with tubes and stuff like that. But <sighs> puking blood. Ah, it's it's a cool death metal video, but I mean, exactly like it would be yeah. more metal if people yeah were the people. yeah. But it's I mean, uh, normally, like I said, both you and I live in countries that we have four seasons, and normally that's the topic of that's the normal topic that people talk about when you, you bump into each other. Oh, we had nice weather. Yeah, yeah, we sure do. Do we do? Do we do? Now it's only so. Uh, 
you heard about the latest uh, death number, death toll in, in with the corona? Yeah. Scary, man. Yeah. But yeah. it's like, okay, see ya. All right. <laughs> Small talk has gotten a lot darker. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has. It's way, way more about death now. Yeah. But, I mean... <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, that's it's... usually small talk about death would be fine in the metal community because we yeah. mean Chuck, right? But like... yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, uh, and yeah, and it's uh, and all the and the that horrible, horrible thing that when when LG died from his cancer, that's just, I mean, that's sad. That's really sad. And then it didn't be a big celebration for him either. I take it. No, there was, um, I, I went, I, 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 he was a friend of mine. We, we, uh, we had, we had kn known each other for a, a pretty long time, but we, we were like, you know, just, you know, keep in touch back in, from now on that we live in the same city, but we, you know, just, you know, texting and he came to, out to our shows. I went to his shows and, you know, we just you know, bump into each other. We're good friends. It's not, but you know, it, it, there were some periods that was, that was more communicative and then, you know, in your know, life cycle, I was living a, I'm living a totally different life from what LG was doing. He, I mean, he was metal through and through. He, he didn't care about anything. He didn't want to be home. He just wanted to be out on the road, sort of. But he was one of the best guys I've ever met in my entire life. He was, he was such a cool guy always always you know he was this straightforward honest cool guy so that was really really sad now so i went i went the day he got buried i went there but it was only you know, i think it was down to maximum of 20 people going so that was close close friends and family so uh but you know it's just sad it's sad that was like really oh man I'm happy I, I I got I got to talk to him. Uh, I think it was like uh, two weeks before the last time I spoke to him was two one or two weeks before he passed. But he, and I've uh, I watched um uh, one of those videos with you talking about your uh, top five albums and stuff like that, and in tune was one of them. So it's just yeah, it's really sad. It's yeah, it's really sad. I mean, when I got to know them was was pretty cool because I I used to, I worked. I, I I was I was drum checking for Peter when he was playing in the tomb, and I did that back and forth for a while, and then I got to know them, and I kept in touch with 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 some of them, and we you know got along pretty pretty well. I mean, and they're, they're cool guys, and same with the Dismember guys as well. I mean, uh, so, but I mean, they're just some guys get oh you know them but i mean it's their people it's, i mean their shit smells too man it's like <laughs> they can also get corona if you know what i mean they're, they're not they're not immortal or untouchable in any way but they're cool people so i mean that, that's basically what it is all about i mean it's just about being down to earth i think because we're what we're doing basically all of us is that we we play play the music that we love i would say i mean yeah. death metal is, unites people in a way i would say that is kind of special death metal heads are, are pretty there are some i mean there are different different genres in in death metal nowadays and then there's also i mean people that are hardcore it should be in, in in a certain way and then there are those of us others that are getting older now that know what we want and know how we like our death metal so <laughs> but it's cool that the young guys are still i mean keep keeping the keeping the flame flame alive yeah um that, that is really cool like uh there's there's lots of different sub genres but what i like about lick is how um you're not like reinventing the wheel or anything but like no. the wheel is really awesome and yeah. <laughs> it works well and uh, that's what i really like about it thank you like, man. like thank like you if, if, we were, if we were talking about rims it would be a big fancy rim that i really like to see spin <laughs> thanks man yeah that, that's a cool uh 
association to it, actually. I haven't, I haven't had that heard up before. A cool rim, but I, I, that's kind of cool. Like spin, like it, it looks like it's spinning in all kind of directions in a really high speed and sometimes slows down. Yeah, Lick it's, is it's like cool. the spinners of rims. Right? Yeah. Like, just really like looking at it or enjoying what it does. Yeah, matte black spinner too. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or gunmetal, gun or or yeah, anything like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of cool. Now, what I think, I guess, I guess the, uh, like I said, it, it's it's kind of boring that we haven't been able to play play the album at all. But but there's been good good things coming out from it anyway. Because I mean, we have we have some seriously hardcore fans. I mean. They're, they're, they're keeping it alive. We're still selling a lot of merch online still. And, and it, I mean, we, we get tagged here and there back to this fucking social thing, but it's necessary. And we have just gotten really good reviews so far. Actually, I haven't read a single one saying that it fucking sucks. It doesn't suck. That's why. Uh, didn't you won an award recently for the album, right? Yeah, we did. The, the Swedish um, P3 Gold Awards. It's a, it's the um, People's Radio. Uh, it's so it vote. It's vote. It uh, the people can vote for it, and then there's a jury that settles it, kind of. And um, ah, that was so unexpected because there there were so many other bands that we were like, yeah, we we don't stand a chance. So we were sitting there just goofing around in a hotel room that we got because it's like you know COVID rules and everything. You have to be separated and all that shit. And we were sitting there, and I was I was joking around with with Nila and say, maybe I should just take a bath. I mean, I miss my bathtub that I had in my old house. I don't have that anymore. Maybe I should take a bath now. And he was like, come on, man, seriously. Come and sit down here. Dude. You're talking about this shit now. Okay. So I'm sitting down and then suddenly the door opens and Leek are the winners. It's like, damn, what just happened? But it was kind of cool. But I, I hope cool that if we... you if you jumped out of the bath to uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there were no towels either. So I was running out butt naked. That would be fucking awesome. <laughs> you just get more renowned for that though, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty amazing. But like, yeah, this uh the new album, like uh you can't find it like um I couldn't find it on Metal Blade Records to buy. They were sold out. Even Amazon was sold out. I had to buy uh an album off of uh Discogs. Oh really? Yeah this is like the smoky one. Um yeah. Oh yeah but that one looks cool. Yeah I yeah think. it does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that one. But yeah. uh, so that right there, that's a, obviously a good sign if you can't buy it anywhere, but where people buy the albums and then sell them at an inflated price. Yeah, yeah. Now, because I heard, uh, I heard some some rumor that I don't know if it's true, but if it is, it's it's actually fucking cool. Because now it would they talked about that we have already, or we are close to recouping the album. I mean, the studio, everything is paid for already. Wow. Thanks to thanks to the fans and everything. So that's just amazing. But like I said, we have we have a bunch of hardcore fans that are really, really, truly followers. I mean, of course, there are others that are saying that we are the most overrated band ever out there somewhere. And I, I mean, there's always going to be haters. I mean, otherwise we wouldn't do this, right? Because I I kind of uh, kind of enjoy that in a, in a way because that it's a little bit like. Okay, but why do you think we suck? Because I, I, this I've seen the stuff that you like. You like like entombed and grave and unleashed and dismembering all those kind of all. What what is that you hate about us? Why are we overrated? It's just a question that pops up. You know. Yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry that sorry that Fred and the other guys couldn't be in this band too. But you know. <laughs> Oh, that's but why I, mean, I really like, like it. Okay, that's why I really like uh, interviewing people in black metal bands because, like, those fans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the more like negative feedback I get, the more I think it's good. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, it kind of, in some way, it kind of 
fuels the fire. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, uh, oh, you want to hate on me? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a so much better album next time. Yeah, you just yeah, wait. Spite. You get, you, yeah. you start doing things out of spite, and it's just like that's that's yeah. that's like a Sith Lord kind of thing to do. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Like just you know, poke him in his eye with a lightsaber, and yeah, you like this. You like that, huh? Yeah, you like that. Come on. Yeah, you suck on it, too. It's like... But if you were to take out their eyes with the lightsaber, then, like, they'd have to just focus on hearing, and then yeah. they'd hear your album better. Yeah, exactly. You're going to take away that the thing that, you know, takes away the, the normality of... I mean, in, in a normal way, if, if we were to be... We, I, 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 I think it was... I don't know if it was a friend of mine or or it was a a, a fan that wrote. It was so cool because because uh, he wrote that if if you guys um, had existed had exist, existed in in the nineties when everything just bloomed and like just say that and, and Tune released Left Hand Path in when was that ninety. Was it ninety or ninety one? Yeah, yeah, it was definitely yeah, something like that. Ninety one, but I, I don't. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not the. Biggest. And then, then clandestine came out like ninety two or ninety three. I don't really remember. I'm I'm bad with dates and stuff like that. Whatever. But if we were to be, he said, if you were to release misanthropic breed, or carnage for that matter, carnage this, is awesome too. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, I really fucking like that cover. That looks fucking awesome. Yeah. No, but and he said that uh, if you would have been released uh, at that same time, you guys would definitely have been one of the, uh, you, know, you know, the the Swedish death metal top four, and that's just really, really fucking nice thing to say, man. That's really humbling. It's like, wow, thanks. But on the other hand, these albums wouldn't have sound of the way they do and look in the way they do if if it hadn't been for the uh, uh for those guys i mean so it's a of course it's a it's a nice it's a nice thing to say and all that but it uh, it wouldn't have existed i think there's no way because i mean the influences are pretty clear i mean we were we were pretty clear from the start with that we i mean we we sort of got into that got that dismember stamp because we said that they are a big influence to us and they are for sure but i mean if you listen to it and you like the old and tombed you can hear a lot of that in there because uh, i was talking I've, I've told this before and it was uh, after we are, we're getting done with the songs for miss and tropical breed thomas was saying to me that i was like but if we listen to it, it's like it's to me, it's really more in tune than this member. Yeah. Way more. Way more. Yeah. <laughs> but I that's just us hearing what we hear. And I mean, it's it's up to everyone, you know, making up their own opinion about what they hear. Cause I think that's that's the good thing about music. If you enjoy it and you get your influences and you hear stuff that I mean. It's fine. I, I'm not saying that. No, it's not like that. If you say if they're saying, I hear a lot of grave, I hear a lot of bloodbath, we hear that too. But, okay, that's cool. I I don't hear that because that, that is not an influence to me. So, but it's death metal. So yeah. yeah. Thing I really like is your music videos too. Like um, the first time I heard a lick song was when my buddy Rick in California sent me a lick to a celebration of the twisted. Right. And I was like, yeah. this is such a cool video, cool sound. I was loving it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We, I mean, we have, uh, we, we, when we, we made the, the uh, video for uh, that one that everybody get murdered by Jonas from Catatonia. Yeah. Yeah. That was uh that was a there was Nila that had a long time idea about doing that <laughs> when and when we did it was like this is gonna come out so fucking cheesy, but that's it, what I uh, loved about it though it yeah like, it was a morbid fascination yeah uh, exactly for me it was like uh it was like a, a fun murder but on on a budget you know yeah exactly <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, seriously come on. <sighs> 
I, I write a lot of the lyrics and and this time around we were so satisfied with it so thomas and i we were just uh, talking back and forth when we because we 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 uh, we write the lyrics uh, thomas and i and most of the time we just you know it's back and forth i can get stuck i can get up to a chorus and then it's like, i I'm, I'm not getting any further here so i send it over to him and he start writing something and he's like i'm stuck you have to continue it. and then he's like we do that a lot like, like, but this time between around between the two and them. this but this time around i wrote a lot of the lyrics and i was like we, we were talking about it they are pretty good this time it's not that much of goofing around like on the two first albums because they are really they're really fucking cheesy it's like damn but it's fun because yeah. i mean you're sitting there and you're over you're you're in your 40s and and <laughs> i'm sitting i'm actually when i wrote the lyrics for i did some lyrics for for carnage i was like fuck man i'm i'm 42 and i'm sitting here and this is so much fun it's so bad he's smashing his head and he fuck him in his skull it's like damn and i was like this is as much fun as the cannibal corpse guys is gonna have when they write their lyrics, I mean, they got to be laughing their fucking yeah. asses up. I mean, oh. there are geniuses coming up with all these fucking killer titles. Yeah. And I mean, they're releasing album after album after album, and they are all fucking killing it. I mean, the latest one, I love it. I I mean, I love Count the Corpse since I, when I got into them at Butchered at Birth was my introduction to them. And since then, it's been like, they always deliver. I mean, yeah. it's so fucking good and watching them live it's like damn you get a punch in the face and you stay down there and wait for the tank because you're gonna run you over as well okay <laughs> it's so cool oh, yeah. the cool fucking guys and it's just keep on doing it that's all respect i them. did a sketch um like uh in december um yeah. it was about uh, a metalhead having sex for the first time while listening to metal and he's more focused on the music than the act yeah, and uh, I finished it off <laughs> with a pretty awesome, I, in my opinion, pretty awesome Cannibal Corpse joke. As you can tell, it's about I come blood. So yeah, yeah, but I mean, that, I think that's that would be. I mean, I I have a hard time having music on while having sex because you get caught up. That's a cool fucking, you know. <laughs> yeah. I like those build <laughs> You have to listen to some to some crappy shit that you don't care about, but you can't put on fucking metal because then you get, oh, here it goes down down. Uh, yeah. I think my my wife would be like, "What are you doing? Concentrate on me." Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So far. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, I should. Uh, okay. Um, can we do the intro now? Like the way I, because we kind of went into this totally different than what I usually do. Because yeah, know, yeah, you an awesome topic, and uh, and uh, so we just started pressing record. So I'll do the intro now, if you don't mind. Yeah, 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 sure. All right, right. Hello, welcome to Mental Health. Uh, today I've got a drummer for you. He's a drummer, and uh, he's in the band Lick. All right, this uh, is this Chris from from Lick. Say hello, everybody. Yeah. Hey guys, it's Chris from Lick here with uh, Metal Health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's Metal Health because uh, it's basically a combination of my three favorite three things. I'm a schizophrenic recovering drug addict, so there's the health part, and then metal. I love metal, and I, I try to throw some jokes in here when I can. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's cool. Well, thanks. So how so how is that? How for how long have you been a recovering? Uh, I mean, a schizophrenic drug addict. That's kind. Of, that's hard, man. It is hard, right? Um, like um, I got diagnosed about eight. Uh, it'll be nine years ago in September. Um, my everyone's schizophrenia is a bit is a bit different. Like some uh, schizophrenia is like a broad brush they'll paint on you when they don't exactly know everything. So uh, all the time. So um, for me, I had false memories. Like I remember things that happened that didn't happen, and I they were they're very paranoia based, and it still happens a bit. But um, uh, I've been dealing with it for nine years, so I'm doing a lot better. And um, like um, I always smoked a lot of pot, and then um, I got diagnosed and everything, and then um, 
that just made my drug addiction go even worse because I was trying to um, medicate myself for the uh, to counteract the side effect from the meds. Um, I gained 75 pounds in the first three months of, uh, of the meds and um, I was so tired all the time. So I chose stimulants. I mean, I, I dabbled in them before and mm -hmm. um, but like that, that's when it got really bad. And uh, the worst it got was once I couldn't afford Coke anymore, I moved on to meth. But uh, yeah, right. But um, I never. I was like, I'm not. A, I'm not an addict, you know. That I'm not using it with a needle. But meanwhile, I've got a hole the size of my fist behind <sighs> my nose. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like corrosive chemicals are not a good thing. No. 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 no it's not. It's not. It, that's. Uh, well, you know. Joined a group. I'm not allowed to talk about. And because it's uh, it's kind of anonymous, but um, um, about two years ago, over two years ago, and um, I've had a few slips since then, but I'm on a good run right now, and it's just day by day. I haven't smoked pot in over two years, and I haven't drank in over two years. It's just that darn mess, you know. That's good, man. Congratulations. Two years, over two years, it's good. It's just you know. Well, you know, I, I, I totally, I can understand. I, I mean, I have, of course, everybody got, got a friend who's got a friend and I got a lot, couple of friends that has had these, you know, addiction problems and it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad. I mean, I can understand. It's like when you, I mean, it's a sickness. Yeah. My brain wants me dead. Like um, yeah. the last two slips I had, it was very apparent that I, no matter how much is in front of me, I can't stop till it's all gone. And no. um, yeah, I, I'll die. So that makes it, it's, it's tough, you know, because in the back of your head, you're like, do it. And then in front of your head, you're like, but I'll lose everything I've gained. And yeah, and I'll be dead. Yeah. 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 Uh, I started yeah. mental health was because I, um, with not being able to do stand up comedy, I've, I've got I've to have an outlet somehow. And uh, because of this, I, uh, I'm now the metal VJ for, um, uh, in Canada, they have this uh, uh, VJ who was on Much Music, which is like our MTV. Uh, yeah. Sock. He's, his name is Ed the Sock. He's got green hair. And he's starting up his new music video channel. And I'm the metal VJ now because I started this. Cool. Yeah. So um, some uh, so I get to pick the music videos. Uh, we're just going for like indie, like, like um, non-signed people in Canada for the most part now. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll expand from there. And, uh, it's cool because like on, on the internet, cause I'm 35 this year, uh, people call me an elitist, but now I'm an elitist gatekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that, that, I mean, that, that's good, good job, man. Being 35 and already be a gatekeeper. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, good on you. I mean, that's. Somebody, some people has to work their whole fucking life to get there. But I mean, 35. Yeah, good. Good for you. <laughs> but it's like, I mean, I'm 45 now and uh, just turned 45 in February. And it's like some old friends of mine are like, it's couldn't you agree on it's like now it's kind of kind of starts happening for you. Yeah, I know. It's like 20 years too late. I get well. I've been I've been with um, when you get this the sponsorship, but I mean, it, uh, it's a kind of a natural thing anyway. I mean, it, it has to be a band that you know gets gets the word out if you yeah like, so I, so to speak. Getting signed to Metal Blade Records isn't like a, a like it, it's like it's a great thing, but it's, yeah. not, it's it doesn't mean you made it. Like yeah, no, 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 not at all. I mean, but but then we're coming back to all that shit we talked about before it's it's about that social media shit is a how many followers and likes do you have and bloody 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 it's just okay well how well, if if that's the way it is yeah, yeah okay we have to we have to roll with it yeah. but it's 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 kind of cool i mean me i mean my one of my biggest dreams came true but that was like eight years ago when i when i got endorsed by Pisces. That was like, damn! That was so cool. I was I was floating on air. It was like, damn! It's, it's 
is this true? Yeah, it's true. God damn it. That's so I'm keep I'm keeping them tight because I've always been a Paiste fan since I started playing drums since I was a kid. I mean, all all my favorite drummers, most of them all played Paiste. So it was it was I have to, you know, when you listen to it, it's like, how do you get that sound? It's like, okay, it's Paiste. Oh, I gotta get a couple of those. So it's you know, just been going forward from there on. So but and all the other stuff it just moves along with it. I, I got I got I'd, um got that uh, endorsement on sticks from actually an American company from I think it's Idaho. And uh, they called Scorpion Scorpion Sticks, and everybody's like, "Why why an American brand, man? Because they are perfect." And I mean, if you have been playing drums, you know that for some people, at least for me, it has been the hunt or the search for the perfect pedals and the perfect sticks is always going to be there. Cause I mean, you change, yeah, I mean, you, your body change and you, your, your body develops as you get older or you, if you start to suddenly work out a lot. And I just did, I had a hiatus for a couple of years when I, I stopped doing all kinds of sports, but I, I like to, I like to work out. So, but I, but I always have been into team sports. So going to the gym, being there alone, it's not good for me because there's too many voices inside this fucking skull of mine. So it's like, I get bored easy. And it's, it's, if no, nobody's there to like, you know, push me, I get bored. It's like, fuck this. It's not worth it. It's boring. I can, I go play drums instead. And I mean, so that that search is like and then you, when you find that perfect stick it's like you just feel it's like an extension of your arm and you just get happy and it's just when i when i pick them up every time is they just still my hands can be sore from if we are uh, on a tour and been playing like say that we're in on the sixth or the seventh show or whatever and your hands are getting pretty sore if you play like 45 minutes to an hour every night it's like and it's natural but they still just they're so smooth and it's like, ah, this is an extension of my arm. It's, it's perfect. And it, I mean, of course I get my blisters and you, you know, bleed and whatever, but it's worth it because the stick is perfect. And I mean, the, the weight is like, ah, man. And then I got into these Polish pedals, the Chachikopiton, or I don't know how you pronounce it. It's Polish. I don't speak that, but they are also, it's the same thing. It's like, damn, direct drive. I, I mean, it's just okay. Let's go. They can never break. I can never break them. It will be impossible. And I've broken a lot of fucking pedals over the years, you know. But I just feel that I'm I'm in a I'm in a good place right now, and I'm just gonna you know embrace that because it's like, who cares? I mean, yeah, sure. I'm 45, but it's 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 not over. I get, I think I have a couple of years left. If, uh, yeah, I, I, I hope you do, anyways, right? Because like, uh, yeah. forty-five in metal years, like that's still about sixty at least, right? Yeah, like, easily. Let me made it to seventy-five, and that's like a hundred and twenty in. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, Dave Lombardo is still doing it, and he's yeah. like, what? He's like fifty, what seven, something like that, fifty-five. I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, it's like, I don't care. I feel fine. I mean, I, I work out at least four to five times a week and I enjoy that. And it's as long as I enjoy that and my body feels good. And I, and I feel that when I play drums that I'm, oh, okay. The working out is, is paying tribute to my, to my drumming and my body isn't that sore. I mean, my body was really sore when I, it, it was more worse when I was in my, 25 30s when you were like drinking all the time drew you know doing all the other stuff that you do and yeah you know you know exactly <laughs> uh, you know running around naked and whatever you don't really remember what you did it's what what cost it but you know <laughs> and then oh we gotta play a show in like two hours and the whole fucking band is drunk as fuck and it's like but after a while, it's like, okay, if we're going to do this seriously, you, you can't be drunk. Cause it's like, do you, do you go to work drunk? No. 
not normally. Yeah, if you hate if you I hate your job. The last two years at least because I I haven't drank any, right? Ah, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, if you hate your job, of course, then you you start up with the breakfast is like a couple of shots or whatever. But because yeah, you got I mean, that job that your dad got you for, got you, and then you just never left, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's like I mean, yeah, you have to. I feel like it's got it has to be. It's a mutual respect. I mean, the fans are coming to you shows. You got to go up there. It's not. It doesn't feel like I wouldn't say that I, uh, I'm doing a job. I really fucking enjoy. It. I love playing live. Playing live at, at, at clubs when you're really not, like close, close to to the to the audience. It's like that's the that's the best thing. It's so it's a you know really hot, steamy, sweaty fucking club, and it's like dripping from the roof, and it's just crazy. And yeah, I love that. That's I mean that that's. That 45 minutes to an hour of just that violent atmosphere, but a kind, a kind violent atmosphere. I love that. It's like yeah, like uh, the part I love about that is it's an outlet for that stuff. You know, if you don't have an outlet for that stuff, you'll take it out on somewhat somewhere else where it really shouldn't be. And at least yeah. you no, know, um, any pit that I've been in, people pick you up. So that's that's uh, that's the important part. So. Yeah. I'm, I, I, when you the create well, the craziest pits I ever, ever 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 saw is like it's I gotta say it's the, in the states easily. Yeah, I actually never had the opportunity to go and play in Canada, but I hope that will change anytime soon. But in the states, it's it's crazy. It's like I mean they're they're kicking each other in the head, and it's like you know there's always blood on the floor, but it, everybody seems happy. Yeah, I've seen. The, I mean, I've seen guys going in with crutches and you know, cast on their fucking legs or arm or whatever. They just go for it, full, a hundred percent. And it's like afterwards, ah, oh, I'm a bit sore, but it was worth it, man. Yeah. And that just, you know, that's that. That's the ticket that you you made someone happy, and he enjoys what you do, and that's like, it's the best fucking thing. I mean. It's just a, uh, it's pure pleasure in some some way. Yeah, I agree. Like if you don't have the bruise on your torso from grabbing the rail, <laughs> were you even on the rail? Yeah, yeah. Or if you're not, if you're not, kind of have that get that notion of, did I break my ribs on my right side? I don't know. Oh fuck! Yeah, maybe <laughs> it, it might be a crack. And everybody, yeah, but are you cool, man? Yeah, it was worth it. <laughs> so you know, so yeah. But it's that it's that it's just that's the way it has to be, you know. It, it's always been like that. So so, but it's cool. I really like it. But, but like I said, I prefer playing clubs are the coolest, easily. Yeah. I mean, I mean, festivals are festivals. I, play, I played with when I'm. I also play in in, uh, in uh, witchery, and we uh, we went to uh, Colombia, and I don't remember we we will play for like maybe twenty twenty five thousand people, and it's just like staring out in a sea of ants or whatever. But it it's so many people that you can't even you don't get that connection, you know. If like I'm sitting in a club, you and me can like suddenly you know get stuck eye and like oh and you like, yeah you know give me that look and it, ah you give me the energy and you don't get that on a festival it's like okay so the festivals you don't have like the the the, the give and take of energy right like, oh exactly oh, okay it's like with stand-up comedy you you, you need that right because yeah they, they, these zoom shows are kind of ridiculous but uh it's all we have right now yeah. um like in in a club you know, you, you, you feel the laughter and then like the whole thing with stand-up comedy is like you want to be starting up the new joke just as the last joke's laugh wave is crashing. Then that's yeah. the whole timing with it and everyone, you have to figure out your own timing. But uh, yeah, it's just really weird with Zoom, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you need that. Cool. But uh, on the stand-up comedy, I, I love that shit. But do you have any favorites? Of course you have, but... Yeah. Um, uh, as far as one-liners, Mitch Hedberg, obviously. Um, I recently I watched um, 
George Carlin's last special, it, it's bad for you. I watched that again. It, it only gets better with time, especially all the subjects he's bringing up. It's <laughs> beautiful. I love it. Um, Cause basically there's like two kinds of stand-up comedy, you know, uh, there's the George Carlin, which wrote out everything that, it, that uh, he knows what he's going to say. Uh, yeah. He knows where he's going to look when he's on stage. Well, when he was, he's been dead for over 10 years, but Hey, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then there's the Richard Pryor too, which like uh, he he go out and just start talking and just had like was kind of had a fucked up um, childhood and everything and yeah yeah he uh, do, do a lot of riffing and he can, so either way it's awesome and um, yeah yeah I I love and I miss stand up a lot yeah I can understand that I, I really like I like him uh, Bill Burr I think he's funny. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, then you have that. What, what's his name? That uh, Australian guy that's living in the states. Uh, Jim Jeffries. Yeah, he. he I, I like him too. He's just so you know. He's so blasé. He's like, ah, fuck you guys. He doesn't care. He's like, well, he's so so relaxed and you know, but but still witty. And he's you know talking about his drug addiction and uh, every time and he's like, ah. Just you know, I'm drunk right now, and everybody, uh, who cares, man? Do you don't care? <laughs> no, he's uh, he's really fine. I like, I really enjoy the old school Eddie Murphy stuff. You yeah. know, delirious and delirious. and raw, especially raw. I love I love raw. That bit when he goes when it, it go with a Italian when he goes up to the stand. I want some juicy fruits and some bonbons, uh, and the nigga's gonna and the mood is gonna pay for it. Yeah, he's like, excuse me. <laughs> Next yeah. thing you know, he got Abdul's hand wrapped around his throat. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that shit. So, so many good comedians. And uh, yeah. Dave Chappelle, he's just the goat. He's the greatest. So uh, He's. It's beyond words. Like, yeah. 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 I really like Kevin Hart, too. I saw, I saw Kevin Hart. Uh, I think it was his latest DVD or whatever. When it, they were doing it at his house, I think. Yeah, yeah. I saw that one, uh, too. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, but it's a it's a little bit more now about the family stuff. It's not that rude anymore. It's, yeah, well, I don't know why, but you know, not us metalheads, but some people mature and stuff. <laughs> yeah, they do. I mean, metalheads do too, but yeah. they they still you know live out their their inner child demon when they you know <laughs> whatever when they go on stage maybe. But I mean, it's like when you get older, you, I mean, it's natural. You get tired, more tired and you get more. I mean, for me, I, I, I thought it was just a, you know, talks or whatever. But before I, I, I went one time, I wasn't afraid of heights. I did, you know, skydiving and I did these uh, bungee jump stuff and stuff like that. But now I'm getting up on a fucking ladder on, uh, outside my house. It's like, oh, damn, this is high. But it's just, it's <laughs> not. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with me? It's like, and I was talking to my friend. He was like, you know what it is? We're getting older, man. <laughs> and we got kids. So yeah. you're getting more. I mean, I'm, I'm driving so much more safe nowadays than I used to do. Is like, I didn't care. I was just, well, went for it, you know. But now it's like, oh, you gotta keep it down here. There's a uh, coming up uh, next is a uh, school on the right side, and uh, <laughs> and sitting in the car talking to myself even more than I ever done before. It's like <laughs> my wife sometimes asks me, "Are you are you sure you not have a little bit of schizophrenia in you?" Maybe, but I get the good answers most of the time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just you gotta you gotta weigh out what what the voices are telling you. Yeah, uh, is that gonna be good for me and my family? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Before it was more like, is this gonna be good for me? Ah, fuck it, let's try it. Yeah, it's yeah. worth. It's gotta be worth it. Most of the times, yeah, not so much maybe. But I mean, you gotta try it once, right? Um, no, you don't have to try everything once. There's a few things that you shouldn't try. <laughs> no, exactly. But that, that's when you get that little voice. If you have a good one saying, no, don't do that. <laughs> maybe you listen, maybe you don't. And I mean, uh, sometimes it just goes right out of hand, yeah. but, but that's good on you, man. <laughs> Is there anything you want to um, promote or talk about before we get going here? 
Uh, keep on, keep on supporting death metal, and uh, please don't stop listening to our new album, and for that matter, the the other albums too. I mean, with our first album, uh, Mass Funeral Evocation. I mean, I think it still stands out. It's pretty strong. I mean, all the three records we've done are, are you could say, are different from each other, yes, but not different from each other because we always try to pick, okay, we did a slow song there and we need to keep, we kind of have a, a little bit of a pattern which is not set out to be, it has to be that pattern, you know what I mean? Is that? But we always like to have that, a couple of mid pace or, or some mid pace and there has to be at least one slow song uh, on a, on every album because we we like that shit it's 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 really cool to play though maybe a slow song but it's not a ballad and that's the important thing yeah exactly i would say that female fatal to the flesh this time the only thing i could think about every time we rehearse that before recording it because i always get these images in my head when i play Every song has a different image. And Female Fatal to me is like the kennel. I was sitting in Kennel Corpse playing. It felt like that. I'm Paul. I can't even pronounce his last name, but I felt like Paul. This is that shuggy guitar. Is a dun, 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 dun. It felt so fucking cannibal. And, and uh, Corrosive Survival to me is uh, a mix of autopsy, old it's a really old school death metal slab to the face it's just here you go shug on that is like you know <laughs> and i really like it because it's so it's so simple in a way but it's like yeah here you go you're welcome <laughs> but i mean just keep on supporting music keep on supporting uh, death metal or metal or whatever i mean everybody's having a hard time especially these us less known bands i mean it's it's i'm thankful that this, it's not my livelihood i'm thankful for that because i have a i know people that that this is a livelihood for them and they are struggling yeah they are having a hard fucking time so um i mean and it's all over the world. You you could see that. And I mean, especially in the states too. There are people are having to, to sell their equipment and stuff just to you know get the day to day life going. And that's just that's, that's harsh. How I, that's how I bought my uh, most expensive record that I have. It's a seven inch, yeah. uh, actually by Woods V Prey. It's um, the album Home, and uh, David Gould died. It'll be ten years ago this December. And it's signed by him, and it's number 66 signed by him. So, yeah, that costs, that's the most expensive record I have. And um, it sucks that the guy had to sell it, but yeah. it's awesome that I bought it. How much did you pay for it? Um, see, like, it was American, and then exchange rate, and then shipping, and then I got dinged on uh, duty tax coming over the border. It was oh, really? closer to 400 than 300. <laughs> For a seven inch with two songs, but it does have my favorite Woods of E Prey song on it. So, yeah. yeah. So it's worth it. Yeah. Right? For me, it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. And that's the most sure, important yeah. thing. Our yeah, I mean, a lot. I mean, a lot of our other our other wouldn't even understand that. It's like, why do you pay that kind of money for that? Yeah. Well, you don't understand because you're not a metalhead. So. That and. If anyone comes over to my apartment and I feel like I enjoy that person enough to put on that song for them, yeah. I tell them we don't talk during this song. <laughs> Listen to this song until it's over and then yeah. we can talk about it because you're not interrupting this $400 record that I just bought. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. You don't interrupt this for, but actually, this song is two hundred dollars. The other one is <laughs> yeah. three hundred because I don't like the other one nearly as much. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> uh, it seems fair. It seems fair. <laughs> oh, thank what, you very much, Chris, for being on Metal Health. This has been a lot of fun. This, yeah, well, this time just 
rolled by so quick. I know we're yeah. way past the 20 minutes, <laughs> but it's been a blessing talking to you. Thank you. Yeah, same to you, man. And take care and keep on struggling and beat those fucking two some more years and just stay out of that shit and just, you know, stay healthy, man. And That's stay awesome. safe for that matter. And hopefully one day if I come to Toronto, I will hook you up. Awesome. I, I look yeah. forward to that. Yeah, that will be fucking awesome to meet in real life because that's what counts, right? It is. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chris. Yeah, same to you, man. Take care. This is the perfect analogy for mental health, all right? Boom, I fall. And then, like, the jogger comes up. Oh, oh, that happened. That happened right in front of me. Do I have to care? Looks around. Looks around. Do I have to care? Oh, there's no one around. Okay, I'll just keep going.